Hey everyone, welcome to Practically Tactical, the show where we add critical thinking to your everyday carry. What you're about to watch here is just a small portion of our full show that is available on Patreon to where you can watch us live stream it on YouTube or you can listen on podcast the same or next day with no ads. So I invite you guys to check us out at patreon.com slash practically tactical link down below. But otherwise, enjoy the small portion of our show uh, coming up here. I think uh, it'll give you something to think about. And again, check us out at practically tactical.com. No, like I'm, I'm very interested in like your philosophy in regards to not just for, for what I teach it and why I teach it, but the approach to the problems, um, you know, you've put up like very, like to me, I look at it, you look like, okay, what's, here's this problem and here's how we've done it before. Is that the best solution? What, what is our approach to the problem? Is there a better way to do it? Um, so for example, um, like we have on, on Patreon, a couple people were like, um, you know, he, he removed the, uh, the tap from malfunctions, I believe. Um, and then, you know, some, some motherfuckers hate me for that, man. They want to send me death notes and shit. <laughs> you killed man. I, don't do it then dude. I, you know, I ain't your dad. Fuck. I don't care how you do your shit. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's like that type of thinking is, I mean, what, what, honestly the the, the the i think to me at least the, the correct word is evolve we're evolving what we're doing if again if we're staying stagnant we'd still be doing stuff from you know when the swat school that you first went to well but crime changes for example um you know like think about how bank robberies used to be a big thing that's almost gone now for example right but now it's technology crimes and you know, on luring people online and, you know, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, I'm curious of, of on, on your approach, your philosophies, this stuff of like, when you look at stuff as an instructor, you know, for example, malfunctions, what, what led you to that uh, of, Hey, you know what? I need to look at this and, Oh shit, uh, this is what I'm seeing. Fuck. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so I think uh, yeah, that's a really huge question, by the way. I, I don't yeah, have, kind of, I mean, it's uh, like when you're done with it, just tell us the meaning of life and we're good. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it is interesting, man, that um, the, the gun thing is kind of seems to be what I'm becoming mostly known for. And I think this is a portion of why I, I, I step back from PNS. Uh, all of my videos, the ones that I did that were not for PNS are now not open. Um, I have a Patreon deal going like you guys do, but I, I think a chunk is, and this goes. Yeah. So but, you're on Patreon. So real quick, everybody that's out there, go support him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, you know, you get different fucking jazz from dudes. You know, well, you know, why, why are you not sharing your info? And, that, and, I, and it, it's not so much that, man. It's a, I, I guess, more of a controlled audience. Uh, Same thing we did. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't if you want it. We'll pay that small, small I, fee for it, bro. I, I think even the, even if I, if you could, I don't think you, with Patreon, right? If you could do let motherfuckers in there for free, but they had to go through a whole sign up process and click and, and this and that right. other thing. Well, now they're invested. So they're them being a dick just to be a dick on shit you're posting. It limits itself. Does that make sense? Versus Facebook yeah. wide open. And you know what I mean? You just get some shit and it starts to get old, man. And, uh, I'm not here to argue. Yeah, I'm not. Dude, I, like I said, I don't care. If you don't want to tap, then, and I say that in class, man, if you want to keep tapping, tap it up, bro. Tap, tap, tap. I don't give a fuck what you do, man. Right? I mean, I don't care. I don't care. But let's think our way through this thing. And if this resonates with you, if it sounds logical to you, um, if the you know your history of shooting, uh, if that tap hasn't saved the day the majority of times, if it's always been something else like a fucking bad primer or, or just racking the gun would have solved it, then, then maybe take a look at it kind of a thing. Um, but I think, so this goes to, I've always been, I think, a, a kind of an inquisitive dude and curious about why are things happening. Uh, on the tactic side of the house, I think is where I started. So, you know, different SWAT teams around shit within my own fucking county, right? It, it, much or less across the country. Um, but dudes do things differently. And so we do it this way. Well, and then they're like, well, well, we do it this way. Well, then why the fuck do you do it that way? Right. And the initial thing was, well, because that's how we've always done it. OK, but why? I don't know. Well, that, to me, that's that is insufficient. Right. So going back to my own teammates who were senior guys, why do we do it this way? Right. And in my case, luckily, I had I had a good mentor, a guy that was pretty smart about shit. 
And he broke it down for me. He said, this is why we think this is the best way to get this done. Because if this, 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 and this. Now, as a young SWAT guy, I'm just bobbling my head going, okay, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. And it was, it's later. So now I go to the, you know, walking backwards with your hair on fire school. Why do you do it that way? Well, it takes care of all of these issues. Okay, well, mine does that too. But it looks like in a couple of instances, this technique actually does it better than the, what I'm doing. So maybe can I morph that into what I'm doing, you know what I mean, and adjust the tactic. I, I just filled the question either today or yesterday on Facebook. Somebody said, hey, man, do you, are you, do you guys do points of domination or do you do opposing corners? What do you do? And my response was, we do every fucking thing. Because you have to read the room. The room will dictate to me what is the best tactic within it. But if I'm so rigid that I only do points of domination, then that's all I'm going to do, even if there's no way for me to do it in this room because of furniture placement or other things. I, you know what I mean? I, I would get stuck in the threshold, as an example, where I would have to push the room in depth to clear that obstruction to get to my corner, whatever the shit might be. So, uh, you know, it's always that. On the gun side, I think it's the same thing, man. Uh, oddly enough, that the deleting the tap was uh, um, just straight off of a, a female officer that we had hired. I mean, one of my my tasks as a farm instructor was, was new guys coming in, new carpers coming in, uh, giving their initial training. So I talked through this, this is how you reduce this malfunction, right? You tap and rack it, and this is why you do it, right? Here's why you tap, and here's why you rack. These these are your here's your explanation, right? So let, let's do that thing. So she's doing her shit, and I we're obviously into this block of instruction, working that specific skill. Um, and so she's, and she knows she's got dummy rounds in the magazines, right? She's not stupid. She's saw me putting the fucking dummies in there. So she's boom, 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 click, and she racks the gun and keeps on shooting. So I'm like, okay, you know, good, looks good, look good, and you know, blah blah. Do you, do you remember what you didn't do there? Kind of a deal, right? Trying to be all Mister Cool Instructor guy. And she's like, I didn't tap it. And I said, okay, well, why didn't you tap it? She said, well, I knew it was a dummy round, so. Was the magazine and like okay well you understand why you want to tap right what if that magazine wasn't all the way seated blah 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 so you, you get that she's bobbing her yep i get it i guess she's not dumb she's a very smart lady get going again boom 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 click racks it boom 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 and i'm like what the fuck man what, what do you not get about what the fuck the words that are coming out of my mouth and she's like okay yeah i get it and so i'm like what the fuck is this is she dumb is you know she trying to fuck with me what, what is happening here so she goes again boom 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 click racks boom 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 and i'm like god damn it what the shit? She goes, well, it, it's, it has worked every time, hasn't it? And so, I, you know, I let her have it. Shut the fuck up. You don't know as much as me. I'm a super smart firearms instructor. I have a certificate to prove that. So do what the fuck I tell you. And I forced her to tap and rack the gun. <laughs> well, I have a, my commute home was like an hour and 15 minutes sitting in traffic. And I remember sitting in traffic that night going, she's fucking right. That shit worked yeah. every time. Not to mention she fired multiple rounds before she got the click. So it's unlikely the magazine was unseated. What the fuck? It, you know, when, why was this invented? Why the hell are we tapping? And then I sort of think about in my own history, how many times has a magazine fallen out of my gun? And if my gun was partially seated, if I fired my gun, would it even be in there for me to tap or would it just eject its ass on the, you know, if I got around the chamber kind of a dealio. And, and so this started making me think about a lot of shit. So I start fucking with a little bit. Eventually the safety net, I'm like, okay, it, it, does it hurt anything? Why not just do it right? Why not just keep this, the the reserve shoot in there and just tap rack? Is that that big of a deal? So then I start timing this shit, deleting the tap, keeping the tap, and it's a half a second, which is two for me. That's two fucking additional fired rounds. And then I have a conversation with Bob Vogel about it, and Vogel says, "Man, I, I don't tap. Fuck it, I don't. I just don't do it." And how many rounds are you you shoot, Bob? I shoot like a billion, right? Where the fuck he gets free semi truck poops out ammo every day at his house, right? Just burp, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, and his cop background, I think, helped me kind of show a thing about that. And then we had a conversation about whether we should show that to the masses, though, right? Your average cop that shoots, you know, whatever, 200 rounds a year or whatever the fuck he's doing for qualification. Uh, or should we just keep the tap in for that guy who's less aware of his gear, less competent, less this and that? Um, and so on the on the PD side, um, I'm kind of getting long way here. You need to shut the hell up, man. No, this, this is no. Keep okay. playing. All right. So yeah, I've, I've got tons of points on all this. You're good. All right. So um, on the on the PD side, I kept showing tap rack uh, to to the cops. Uh, on the SWAT side, uh, because those guys were were better gun handlers. I mean, we were shooting ten hours a month. My, you know, very very fortunate. Again, um, I mean, my guys got ten thousand rounds nine millimeter, ten thousand rounds five five six. That was their SWAT allocation each every single year. And then they still shot shit on patrol or if they were teaching guys. I mean, they, you know, they, they were shooting a lot. So I felt based on what I could see, the competency, the skill, the actually, the, the, the manipulation, all that shit was there. So I brought it up to my team 
and got some resistance, uh, kind of talked guys through it. And, and I don't know if there's a dude on the team to this day that taps. There might be. Um, and I don't care if they do. Again, it's not like it's, I take it as a personal affront. Everybody's making decisions about how they're going to run their own fucking tool. Um, so I, 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 when I became the training supervisor for the organization, I, I decided that it, um, it, it's really hard. So the SWAT guys, that's easy, right? Hey, get, SWAT guys, we're, these are the days you are scheduled to come shoot. And, and that has zero impact on calls for service and street staffing and, and doing all that kind of shit. And I, would, I believe that I could take every cop in the organization if I had the resources, meaning the bullets uh, and the time, and I could turn all of them into really, really high end shooters as long as they wanted to, that to be the case. Right. They got to come with a little bit of motivation themselves to actually be interested in what we're talking about. Um, but that is not the case. Right. Cops. You know, and I hear sometimes, well, you know, cops should shoot better. They're, they're professional gun carriers. Yeah, well, bro, you know, there's a lot of guys that became cops not for that reason. Right. right? Oh, cops are gun fighters. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, 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 they that the guy that you're disparaging because he stinks with a gun, you know, he and I just mentioned this the other day, he might be the best uh, rape detective on the planet. So now you have me and your daughter's been raped or that guy and your daughter's been raped. Which of the two do you want to come handle your daughter's rape case? Because it sure as fuck better not be me. Right. I'll just shoot shit. Right. Unless you're about to turn off that body. <laughs> right. right, Bill. God damn it. Right, right. I, yeah, I would much rather have this guy. And, you know, and so there is that bit. So what I decided to do um, was get with the chief and say, hey, let we internally, A, for instructor development of our own firearms instructors, but also development of the staff, let's host our own internal pistol and rifle training. So a guy that wants to get away from just the, the shit he's mandated to do, um, we could potentially then run a one or two day pistol class, rifle class as voluntary guys sign up. They'll register through me as the training supervisor. I'll coordinate with their bosses to make sure they're scheduled the time off. And we'll just give them a two-day pistol class, two-day rifle class kind of a thing. And so we were able to elevate a good chunk of patrol with that. And so in those classes, I started bringing it up as an alternative, right? Here's something to think about. And, and may, I really just want gray matter to get engaged. Does that make sense? So I, like I said, I don't care if you don't, if you want to keep tap man habit, but I want you to start thinking about what you're doing and why, how does it pertain to me and the shit that we already talked about, right? The, the size of the gun, the size of your hand, the size of your body, your strength, your injuries, your this, your that are all going to affect how you shoot that handgun compared to me. So for me to be rigid and say, do it this way only is the height of stupidity. I mean, that's the dumbest fucking shit. I can think of. I'm going to show you several options, and then, and then, honestly, you got to put the work and decide what's working best for you. Um, so uh, there's well, that. But I, the, the tactics piece, I think, is what made me start thinking more about how I'm running the guns and what I'm doing with them. On the rifle side, I think it's just I, I happen to be a weirdo that shoots rifles lefty and pistols right-handed. Uh, so I did get to. I, I got the perspective of a left-handed rifle shooter with almost always having right-handed instructors as I was coming up. Right, so drill sergeant flowers. Um, how do I how do I work this motherfucker as a as a lefty? And he he's like I don't know mirror image of a righty, right? And I would get that type of advice. So I think because of that, it also made me start thinking critically about what am I doing as a left-handed rifle shooter because there was very little information and very few instructors that were talking about it. Because I was lefty, that forced me in my classes to pay attention to the left-handed guys as well, but also the critical thinking piece about you know how can they manage that thing differently. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Again, that is just a small part of the show that you watched there. And again, we record one of these every single week, available on podcast or live on YouTube or watch later after recorded on YouTube. Again, more information, go to patreon.com slash practically tactical or go to practically tactical.com. Again, check us out. It starts out at 10 bucks a month where you get every single show and podcast. And then we have exclusive videos. We even have free training and an exclusive discount code list for all sorts of products that you need. Again, we want to thank our sponsors out there. Uh, you can go to practicallytactical.com slash sponsors to get more information and discount codes. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers that listen to our show and ask questions every single week. We really appreciate that. So again, check us out at practicallytactical.com where we have more videos and content over there. 